Hello everyone and welcome to the December 2018 update of the Power BI Desktop. As always, we have lots of exciting features to walk you through today and we're going to start with the reporting features. First on our list is a feature that PowerPoint has had forever, basically, and a lot of people have been asking for us to integrate it into the Power BI desktop as well, which is Smart Guides. So this is, you know, whenever you're adjusting things in PowerPoint and you have those little red lines that pop up to help you align things with other objects on the page. Same principle. We have now integrated that functionality right into Power BI reports. So if I go over to my report, and I start just resizing something, you'll see these lines popping up. I can um, align things with all of the different objects on my canvas, and it's not just when I resize. Um, if I move stuff around, the red lines show up as well. And not only do they show up, but as I move stuff, it also will snap nice and easy to those red lines as well. So this is a really useful fun feature to ha to use whenever you are uh, creating your reports and wanting to make sure that everything is nice and aligned perfectly and looks just really good. It also makes just report building a lot easier and more user friendly. Next up, we have a ton of new updates for our ArcGIS maps for Power BI. We have some of the updates are going to be for the free version, and then you'll, we'll also talk about some of the updates to our plus version as well. The selection tools are no longer along the side of the visual and instead whenever you hover your mouse over the top left here then they start showing up and allow you to be able to interact with them. So it's just a little bit of a cleaner UI. There's also a new find similar tool in this toolbar. So if I pick the option that says find similar, I'll be able to do things like know if there are any other places in my data that's like the tool, the, the locations I'm selecting. So this is going to be helpful for things like if say you have a few stores that are being successful with a new strategy and you'd like to see if you have any other locations where the strategy might also work as well. So to start using this feature, the first thing you have to do is pick out what data you want this analysis to be run on top of. So you'll see if you go back to the field, the field list in well here, there's a new bucket called find similar. And what you'll do is you'll drag in any of the fields that you want us to run and determine what what other stores are going to be similar to the ones in your selection based off of these fields you drop in this bucket. And so once you pick out the fields that you think are important, you'll, that's whenever this new option will be uh, enabled for you. Clicking on it as well will tell you what, uh, f what fields are going to be used to calculate the similarity. So you can see here it lists out the store cells, uh, education, things like that. So the things I had dropped in my bucket, I don't actually have to go back to the field, we the field well to actually see what the analysis is going to be run off of. And so what I now I can do now that I selected it is I can actually go and select my point. So for example, I maybe I want to let's say go with some of the points in the Pacific Northwest. So let's just pick a few of these bubbles. And then once I selected them, I can go and click filter report. Oh, actually first I click run. And then you'll see all the similar locations. So the blue ones are the are the uh, the ones I picked to filter based off of. And then uh, Esri has found ten uh, locations, or about ten locations that are similar to the ones I had selected here. And then I can go further and click filter report and actually filter the rest of my report based off of the uh, the data that I, this analysis that I've just done. Uh, one thing to know is that all this calculation is done on your local machine, so no information is sent to Esri servers. So you can be sure that your confidential data remains safe. 
Esri also has updated a lot of their boundary data as well. So Esri has supported the standard administrative boundaries for over 130 countries for quite a while, but they have done a lot of work to improve those even further to allow for greater accuracy. If I go into focus mode for this map and choose to edit the map, you'll see that the location type is an option in this toolbar. And you're able to do things like, uh, let's say, let's say locations are in a specific country, and you can see all of the different countries that Esri does support for this. So, of course, my data is in the U.S., so I'm not going to change it, but you can see there's a lot of different locations available here. And what they've done is for a lot of these regions, they've in improved the accuracy of their boundary data. Uh, for example, one country that really benefits from these changes is Australia. So if I pick Australia in this drop down, um, if I was using Australia data, I'd be able to visualize my boundary data in different statistical area levels, which makes it easier for me to quickly and accurately map my data. For example, uh, if in Australia, we, we now support not only seven, but all the way up to 11 SLA codes in Australia. Uh, you'll also see these kind of improvements for a lot of other countries as well, such as France and Spain. As I mentioned, there are improvements for the Plus subscription as well. So the ArcGIS Maps for Power BI Plus subscription has always unlocked access to a lot more of the Esri curated geographic content, but now Plus users can also access even more infographic data on income, expense, race, education, health, and other demographics as well. You can also now pin maps with up to 5,000 addresses. So the normal ArcGIS map for Power BI lets you geocode up to 1,500 addresses for maps, but with a plus subscription, you can also um, geocode up to 5,000 addresses for every maps, and you're able to pin these maps to dashboards as well with no problems. So these are some of the mapping improvements that you'll, you'll see if you're using our ArcGIS maps for Power BI. And I definitely recommend giving it a try, especially if you have uh, mapping needs for your reports. Uh, this visual is a very powerful visual and does take advantage of a lot of the, the uh, Esri's uh, leading visual analytics features for maps. Next up is some accessibility improvements for our field list. So hopefully you've seen over the past few months that we've been putting a lot of effort into making sure that Power BI end-to-end -end is a completely accessible tool. We want to make sure that, no, that everyone, no matter their ability, has access to data because we know how powerful data is. And so with this month's updates, you now can, whenever you put focus into the field list, and start moving your focus around with tabbing and the keyboard, you're able to actually navigate the field list. And if you, you can expand things, you can add them to your, your, uh, um, your report. You can, at the screen readers all work really well with the field list pane as well. It has complete support for, for keyboard navigation. So as you're navigating, uh, some keyboard shortcuts you might want to know are, um, for example, if you hit the right arrow key, you will expand a table, and the left arrow key will collapse it. When you're tabbing around, you can hit the space to select a field, and then, of course, jump to the ribbon to, using the Alt key to do all of the modeling operations on it. Uh, you can also open the context menu from here. If you have a context key actually on your keyboard, that will, of course, work. The other option is to press Alt-Shift-F10, and that will open up the, the, the menu as well for you to be able to navigate. Um, and if you do want to be able to actually just, you know, check the box and let Power BI do its thing to create a visual by default or place it into the field well, all you have to do is pick the option that says check. Pretty obvious. With a uh, keyboard, select it, and it will actually check it. In my case, it added it to this chart that I had selected already. 
Two other keyboard shortcuts you might want to know are that Alt-Shift-1 will collapse all tables and Alt-Shift-9 will expand all tables as well. Opening up the context menu again as well. In addition to the check option, if you go all the way to, down to the bottom, you'll see that there are some new options as well. There's an option to add the field to the filters pane and also and if you click that, you also be able to pick specifically which of the buckets, the visual, the page, or the report level. And you can also add it to the drill through bucket as well. So with all of these changes, you'll be able to completely navigate um, with a screen reader and or your keyboard, uh, the field well, at the field list, and you'll be able to add anything you want to the field well. And so basically you have full authoring capabilities for your Power BI report. Another accessibility related feature this month is that you can now control the focus order for all the objects on your page and also choose for things to be skipped in the focus order. By default, Power BI, when a user is using a keyboard to navigate your report, when they're hitting tab to move across the visuals, the default order is the creation order of your uh, visuals. And that's the order that the tab is going to to go. And sometimes that can be, to, especially if, and most people when they're first creating reports, they're not very organized, they're just kind of putting stuff on the page. That can result into a lot of jumping around of the focus order. And we want to make sure that we enable you, if you are creating reports that you want to make sure are accessible, to set the focus order that makes the most sense for your report layout. And that's going to be really hard for us to tell, but as the author, you know what's going to be best for your report. So we have a new pane, pane that lets you actually set the tab order. So if I go back to my report and I go and open the selection pane, which we you hopefully all know and love already, you'll see that there's now a toggle at the top. So the default's the layout order, which is what you uh, are used to, being able to see all the different things on your report, show and hide them, rearrange the, the layering, so the Z order of the objects. But we also now have this new option called tab order. And when you click on it, it will actually show with a number on the side all the different things on your report and what the, the current order of them is. So you can see the first thing is the header and then another piece of the header, the text. The overview is the first one, then sales report. Then it's going to move to buttons and um, all the different buttons on the left here, one through 10. And it has just, it will list out in the same order as the focus order is going to move. And if you want to change up the focus order, all you have to do is drag and drop. So for example, if I wanted the cards to go before the left navigation, I could easily just drag them up and move them all up one by one. You can also use the, if you don't want to drag and drop, you can also use these arrows at the top. And there are some keyboard shortcuts that make it easier as well to, to rearrange things. Another uh, nice feature of this pane is the ability to actually skip things. So you'll see I've already done this for some of my uh, stuff on my canvas. By default, everything is going to be in the focus order. But there are a lot of people who spend, including in this report, time putting things that are more decorative into the report and not something that's going to be actually be useful for someone trying to consume it and get the data. It's just supposed to make it look pretty. So, for example, this dividing line right here, you know, that doesn't provide any extra information to someone consuming the report. It just makes it look a little nicer. So you can see here, because of this... Uh, the symbol right here, you know that this element has been excluded from the focus order. And to do that, all you have to do is, let's say, uh, I wouldn't advise this, but let's just say you want to skip the matrix in the focus order. All you have to do is hover over the number. The icon will start showing up. You click it, and now it's no longer in the focus order. And to put it back, all you have to do is click on it again, and it will put it back at the bottom of the focus order for you to then rearrange and figure out where the best place it is to go. So this will allow you to really, especially we, we've already heard requests for this feature from a lot of people who are choosing to embed their report, especially in public portals or in apps that they're trying to make themselves accessible. It's really important to be able to make sure that the focus order is logic 
logical for your reports. The next feature on our list came actually directly from the community. Uh, there was a request that was put on user voice uh, for the ability to edit the tooltip that shows on buttons. And it took off on Twitter, and within a few days, it actually showed up on the hot list, a lot of votes. And our engineering team loves especially seeing the, these like smaller features that, peop- that would make a big impact and a lot of people are really excited about. And they'd love to just take them and see if they can make a really quick difference for our users. And so that's what happened here. They saw this new idea that was actually pretty simple to implement and they just took off with it and added it into the product right away. Um, So, we now have the ability to edit the tooltips on your buttons. So if I go over to my report, you'll see that I actually have a button down here, the Q&A button, and under the formatting pane for it, in the action card, I now have this option for the tooltip. And you'll have it both for Q&A and for bookmarks. You're able to adjust the tooltip through this box. So you can just type anything you want in here. So in my case, I typed in ask a question about the data. And then whenever someone hovers over the button, that tooltip shows up. Easy as that. Uh, it's a really small, quick feature that we d- we picked up and did, like I said, based off of community interest. And uh, hopefully it m- just adds a little nice touch to your reports that you're building out. Last up in the reporting section is just a really small update that happened for our visual interactions, which is that we've updated how the icons actually look. So if you go into the edit interactions mode, so let me select a visual and choose to edit interactions, you see that the, we have new option button options available here. So you can actually see the filter icon is changed. So you can see the difference between this and the other icon. And uh, these buttons are also now SVGs, so they scale nicer, they show up nicer. um, And to go along with that, actually, the the visuals in our formatting pane as well, and many of the cards are also SVGs. So um, this was a cleanup task that we did that makes the icons just look nicer, but also is also a plus for accessibility because that means that they'll respect your high contrast mode as well if you set that through the window settings. This month, under the analytics section, we have a preview of one of the most asked for features for Q&A, which is support for Live Connect models. So if I switch over to this report, you'll see if you look in the bottom right that it is in fact Live Connected to an Analysis Services tabular model. And because I turned the preview feature switch on in the options dialog, you'll see that the Ask a Question button is in fact enabled. It's no longer disabled. So all I have to do is double click and I'll be able to ask my question. So for example, sales amount by category. And just like that, I have Q&A working on my model. That's as easy as it is. Uh, There are a few limitations that you want want to be aware of. So for example, um, it doesn't yet work for live connecting to a data set in the Power BI service. It also doesn't support multidimensional models. And lastly, it does have to be a somewhat new version of analysis services model that you're connecting to. It can't be older than SQL 2016 RTM version 13.0.1601.5, or it can't be a model with a compatibility level of less than 1,103. So assuming you have a relatively newish model to connect to, make sure to try out this feature while it's in the preview and let us know what you think and if there's any other changes you would like to see. First on our list from modeling is a couple of updates to our DAX formula bar. We want to make it even easier for you to be able to edit your DAX and be productive when modeling. And so you'll see when I switch over, a couple of useful updates related to the formula bar. Uh, The first is that uh, it now can be quite a bit bigger than it used to be. It used to have like a hard limit of 11 lines, which is okay in some cases, but if you have a measure that can be quite long and you're editing it, 11 lines is just not enough and you end up scrolling a lot. So if I click on a measure that's quite large, like say the spark line, 
you'll see that this measure, it's very long, it still has a scroll bar, but the formula bar, it goes almost to the bottom of my screen. And it has, uh, you know, you can see here it's about 40 lines long. And I mean, it still scrolls, but I can actually read the majority of my measure at one time, which is really nice and useful. Another feature we added to the formula bar this month is the ability to actually zoom on it as well. This is useful for a couple of different reasons, like um, if the default font size is a little bit too small for you and you want to make it a little bit bigger to read, or if, say, you're giving a presentation and presenting some decks and you want the people at the back of the room to actually be able to read what you're typing, this is also really useful for that as well. So to zoom, all you have to do is hold down the control key, and then you can either use the plus and minus keys, or you can use your, your scroll wheel on your mouse as well to do the zooming. And you can make it smaller or bigger, and it can get quite large if you really need it to, again, if you're back of the room, people need to be able to see it. Uh, so this is, again, another usability feature that just makes your life when using the formula bar a little bit easier. The second feature on our list is another accessibility feature, which is just actual support for accessibility related stuff in our data view. Uh, up until this point, you could do the modeling stuff through the ribbon and in the report view, but if you actually wanted to go into the data view and navigate your data with a screen reader or a keyboard, we just didn't support that. So now if I go over to the data view, Collapse this. Um, and I have, of course, this is the normal field list, so it has the same accessibility support we've had for the field list. But if I jump over my focus to the table itself, you'll see that the row that I'm currently focused on is highlighted, and I can actually navigate it with a keyboard. So um, I can go to any individual cell or select the whole column all through the keyboard itself. And if I had a screen reader running right now, it would also be reading out all the all this useful information, like act, the actual value of the cell. It would also read out what, uh, the, if you're on an individual cell, it would tell you what the header is, what row you're on. Um, it will tell you whenever you're on a header how many, uh, the same information that shows at the very bottom, so how many rows there are, how many distinct values, things that are useful whenever you are uh, trying to consume the data of your model with a screen reader. So at this point, with this effort that we did, you can also, of course, reach all, all the different menus as well from the headers. And with this, all this work, you, we sh should have full capabilities uh, using a screen reader or any assistive technology that anyone else would have whenever they're in the data view. The new custom visual this month is an interactive directed flow graph. This graph helps users do basic process mining to better understand the flow of their event data. Now let's take a look at the demo report so you can understand how to use this visual. So here on the samples report, you'll notice that there's two requirements for this custom visual. The first is that you'll need to install Microsoft R packages as a prerequisite. You'll also need to ensure that your data is event log data. When building this visual, there are three mandatory fields. You're first going to need a case ID, which is a numeric, and then you'll need an activity field, which is usually the event name. And finally, you'll need a timestamp. You want to make sure that all of these fields are not summarized, so make sure don't summarize is selected. Additionally, you'll notice that there are two other options here for path and activity threshold. This indicates essentially control for the number of paths you'd like to see or the number of activities you'd like to see. The recommendation here is that if you're using Power BI's desktop, you can then add what if parameters to control these with on page slicers. Now for our data connectivity section. First on our list is the at scale data connector, which is now available in Power BI Desktop. This connector allows you to build reports off your at scale data in either import or direct query mode. The next connector on our list allows you to connect to Oracle eBase in import or direct query mode. Both of these connectors can now be found in the get data dialog of Power BI Desktop. 
but stay tuned because soon these connectors will be supported also in Power BI service. Next, in our data preparation section, we have a new improvement to our fuzzy merge. We now allow you to specify the top end number of best matches per row. Let's take a look at the demo report to see this in action. So here on my demo report, I have two tables that I'd like to merge. The first is showing language and then the common greeting associated with that language. Uh, and then the next is showing the number of native speakers for a given language. So let's use fuzzy matching and then its new improvements to output a merge table. Okay, so let's click on our greetings table and then we're gonna select merge queries. And let's select our speakers table. We're gonna wanna merge the two by the common column, which is language. And then make sure the fuzzy matching option is selected. All right, so let's bring this up. So the new part that's been added is the maximum number of matches. So to show you how this works, I'm first not going to specify anything, and then I'll come back and then specify one to be the maximum. So if we click OK. So since I didn't add a specific number for the maximum, you're going to see this caused some errors in the merge table. And the error being that, for example, instead of pulling just Spanish, uh, for this row, it also pulled Danish as a match. So I don't want it to have multiple matches. I just want to match one per row. So I'm going to go ahead and redo the setting so that I get the desired output table. So now here, I'm going to go ahead and put one. Now you see the merge is working as expected, and I'm only merging the single best match for each row. We have some other updates for you guys this month. Both are tied to accessibility. The first is we've now have support for high contrast on all of our panes and the report footer. To test this out, you'll need to go to your system setting and turn high contrast on. Now our last update for you guys this month is that we've updated the keyboard shortcuts dialog. To open this dialog in Power BI, hit shift question mark and you'll see that we've added even more shortcuts. These include commands across the product, pane navigation commands, and on visual and on slicer commands. So that's it for a December release of desktop. I encourage everyone to go ahead and try out these great new features and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you and we always appreciate your feedback. Thank you for watching.